Shalom to the elect of Israel, to the hopeful elect of Israel, you Hebrew Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, West Indians, and Haitians. Gotta give all praises and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, the Most High, the Heavenly Father. His Hebrew, his Hebrew name is Yahweh, not Yahweh, not Jehovah, not God, not Elohim, not Most High, not Lord, not Yah, not Jah, not Ahaya, not Allah. It's Yahweh. His only begotten son name in the Hebrew is Yahweh Shah. Not Yahshua, not Yeshua, not Jesus Christos, not Jesus Christ, not Serapis Christus, not Yeshua, not Yehoshua, it's Yahweh Shah. So we gotta give all praise on and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shah, Bahashim Rikar Kodash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, Ruel, who teach well, who are the apostles and elders of all of Israel, ready to accept it or not. And a sincere salutation to all the who pushing this truth and believing this truth throughout the four winds of the earth, the entire world, waking up the whole for the leg. And shalom to the Akwath who are listening and learning, the few sisters who are listening and learning. I'm Isaiah from Jim Masolano Kemp coming into another lesson in truth, facts, faith, and edification. Another daily edification, Lord's willing, this be edified. Now, my lesson I was doing earlier, same title, did you support two? There are some wicked demons amongst Israelites, okay? There's some wicked demons amongst Hebrew Israelites and they're teaching madness. And I, as I was going into before um, my Wi-Fi started messing up about this guy Tazaria talking about he ain't oppressed, right? Like he's like he some special, some special guy outside of the 12 tribes of Israel. And I brought out the, some scriptures in the other lesson, which I had to um, edit out the last little few minutes of that other lesson because the internet was messing up. So I, I had to uh, go back and edit it out. But anyway, this is the part two. And I, I brought out um, Jeremiah 48 and 10, right? Woke to him that the, um, it said, Cursed be he that keep back his sword from blood. So this guy saying that uh, as they said, John the Baptist wasn't in the truth and he ain't oppressed. Well, we all oppressed, man, right? The Lord said he scattered us amongst the nations throughout the four corners of the earth, man, right? Well, we shall serve under all these heathen nations. So who is this guy to say that he ain't oppressed, man? Who is this guy? We have all, and I brought out Jeremiah 15, 33, as it reads, thus saith the Lord. Matter of fact, I'm gonna read it again. Jeremiah 15, 33. Thus saith the Lord Yahweh of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together, and all that took them captives, held them fast, they refused to let them go. And this guy said, He ain't oppressed. Well, then you must not be a Hebrew Israelite, then you must be a heathen. Because all of because all of Hebrew Israelites, all 12 tribes are oppressed, man. Um, and what they're doing is lying to the people, man. And I like I was saying in the last lesson, you got some Jakes that'll listen to that, man. Because you got a lot of Jakes that say they are free. And as I love to bring up, this guy, um, this guy volunteer, this is what he said. This is a quote from the guy volunteer. And he said, Oh, Salakia, wrong one. Not volunteer. This guy Wolfgang. This guy named uh, his name is Johan Wolfgang. He said, none are more hopelessly enslaved than those who falsely believe. They are free. None are more hopelessly enslaved than those who falsely believe they are free. And you got these, you got these Yah Israelites talking about the 400 years of slavery, right? And that was last that's supposed to uh, supposedly uh 2019, August, August the 20th, August the 19th, 2019. We supposed to have been 400 years of slavery, supposed to have been up. Man, that's talking about Egypt, man. That had nothing to do with here. So you got these two-third bug outs talking about they free, man. We ain't free. 
But the Lord said, Micah 2 and 10, arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. It will destroy you, right? Meaning spiritually come out of this place, man. Like I say in Jeremiah 51, spiritually come out of this place. But we are not free, man. You can't just leave America without having a, some type of uh, passport. And if you be gone out of America too long, if you be gone too long, you're going to get violated, man. We are not free here. And all of Israel is oppressed. All 12 tribes. This is um Psalms. And that guy's bugged out, man. That guy's bugged out. This is Psalms 107. And we'll start at verse 2. It reads, Let the redeemed of the Lord Yahweh say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy, and gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. That's the four corners of the earth, man. All four corners of the earth, man. And in between. And gather them out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. Well, Babylon the Great and all the islands around the world, uh, South and Central America. They found no city to dwell in. Right. Because we ain't in our city, man. We ain't in our land. Verse five say hungry and thirsty. Their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord Yahweh in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. Right? When you read Isaiah um, 19, which I'm going to read, he led them forth by the right way that they might go to a city of habitation. We're not in our, <laughs> we're not in our city, man. We are serving amongst our enemies, man. Right? We are... Uh, Heroes of wood and drawers of water, man. Heroes of wood and drawers of water, man. Well, in the land of our enemies, man. Isaiah 19. Isaiah, so reading this again. Psalms 107. Let's read this again. Psalms 107 and verse 6. It says, Then they cried unto the Lord Yahweh in their trouble, well, in the land of our captivity. And he delivered them out of their distresses. This is Isaiah 19 and 19. It reads, In that day shall that be an altar to the Lord Yahweh in the midst of the land of Egypt, was Egypt, Babylon the Great, and a pillar at the border thereof to the Lord. What's the pillar that's at the border? It's talking about the men's and the highways and byways in the chief places of the cities, man. OK, that's what it's talking about. And a pillar at the border thereof to the Lord Yahweh. And it shall be for a sign and for a witness. What is the sign? That Israelite men, so-called Negro, Latino, Native American, West Indian, and Haitian men standing in great boldness. This is a sign to the world, man. OK, this is a sign. So-called Negro, Latino, Native Americans, West Indians, and Haitian men. Standing in great boldness is a sign to the world, man. You say, and this shall be for a sign and for a witness. Why is it a witness? The Lord said, and when you read in um, Isaiah 43 and 10, that we are his witnesses, man. It say, and it shall be for a sign and for a witness unto the Lord Yahweh of hosts in the land of Egypt, for they shall cry unto the Lord Yahweh because of the oppressors. What is this guy talking about, man? This is so that this that show you, man, this guy is not following the ways according to what the scriptures say, man. They are not, man. Again, for they shall cry unto the Lord Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shah, because of the oppressors, and he shall send them a savior and a great one, and he shall deliver them. Back in Psalms 107. These are cuts to this guy, man. Psalms 107 and verse 2. Let the redeemed 
of the Lord Yahweh say so, whom he have redeemed from the hand of the enemy and he gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. They wanted in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in because it's not of us, man. It's not ours, man. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord Yahweh in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. And he led them forth by the right way that they might go to a city of habitation, man, which is, well, Jerusalem, man, Israel, which is not in Africa, man. <clears throat> this is um, Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 19. Let's read Proverbs 6 and 16. Six things do it the Lord Yahweh hate. Yeah, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. This is shed innocent blood is exactly a point that this guy made about he is not oppressed. You lying to the people, man. That's why I say in Jeremiah, read this again, Jeremiah 48 and 10. Cursed be he that doeth the work of the Lord deceitfully, and cursed be he that keepeth back his sword from blood. What he's doing to the congregation is shed innocent blood, man, by lying. You keeping back your sword from blood, that's you literally, actually, Shedding innocent blood to the people, man, because you lying to them. Back in Proverbs 6, 17 reads, a proud look and a lying tongue and hands that shed innocent blood. Now, you got literal hands shed innocent blood and you got ones that speak lies, man. You destroying the people, man. Right? As I tell you in Jeremiah, um, Five, they judge not the cause of the fatherless. That's what you're doing, man. It say, uh, verse 18, and a heart that devises wicked imaginations. That's a wicked imagination to say that you are not oppressed. That's wicked, man. It say, feet that be swift and run into mischief. A false witness that speaketh lies. And he that sow of discord among brethren. That's the main thing you doing, man. You sowing discord by saying you ain't oppressed. It tell you in the scriptures that the king, even the king shall go into slavery. Shall go into captivity with all of Israel, man. What are you talking about? So you special? So you outside of this? The scriptures say even the king shall go into captivity with Israel, man. So what is you talking about? Who are you? You must be a damn heathen. You can't be an Israelite talking about you ain't oppressed. This is Isaiah 51 and 14. It reads, the captive. Who are the captive? So-called Negro, Latino, Native Americans, West Indians, and Haitians, man. The captive, exile, Hasten him that he may be loosed. So you loose. You free. You can do whatever you want to do. So you can leave America with no passport. That's what you're saying? You just go to an airport, get on your private jet or your private helicopter, and you can just leave Babylon the Great without a passport. You can't do that, man. <laughs> you can't do that, man. The captive exile, hasten enough that he may be loose and that he should not die in the pit, nor that his bread should fail. This guy is one of the dumbest guys I know, man. With all that supposedly, allegedly wisdom that he has, he is dumb as hell talking about he is not oppressed, man. If you're a Hebrew Israelite, you are definitely oppressed. This is Revelation 22 
and one, it reads, and he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of power and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there a tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits. Why does say why? Why is the tree bearing twelve manner of fruits? Because this is only for the twelve tribes of Israel, man. And yield her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of power and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. The word servant right here. Who is it talking about? When you go to Leviticus 25 and 55, it tells you that the servants of the Lord are Hebrew Israelites, man. Nobody can be a servant or a saint unless they are Hebrew Israelites. It say again, Revelation 20 and 3, and death shall be no more cursed. Are we not all under curse, all 12 tribes? So how is this guy talking about he ain't oppressed? Because you have received that 501c3 tax exempt and you have got the bag. You got the bag now. So you too dumb to understand. But as it's saying, um, Isaiah 28 and verse 15 reads, because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death. And with hell are we at agreement. When the old flowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. For we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. And that's what this guy Tazariah is doing, man. He's hiding himself. He's he him and his whole uh, congregation, organization, whatever you want to call it, is hiding themselves of what? Under falsehood, man. It said, hell, are we at agreement? It said, for we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. And that's anybody, man, that had the 501c3 taxes in. All of them, all these, all these camps, man, they all got it, man. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 7 reads, Surely oppression make a wise man mad, and a gift destroy the heart. That's why I brought out Ecclesiastes chapter two, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter twenty, man, because this guy had received a gift. And what it say? I'm gonna go back to it. Ecclesiastes seven and seven. Surely oppression make a wise man mad. See, he ain't mad because his ass ain't wise, man. He ain't wise, man. That man is bugged the hell out. Him and all his organization is bugged out, man. Talking about he ain't oppressed. Surely oppression make a wise man mad and a gift destroy off the heart. Right? The gift is destroying these people's hearts, man. Let's read this. Ecclesiastes chapter 20 and verse 9. There is a sinner that have good success in evil things. These are the ones that got the 501c3. And there is a gain that turned to loss. There is a gift that should not profit thee. And there is a gift whose recompense is double. So a gift to stroke the heart, man. <laughs> Which is what? That 501c3, man. There is a gift that should not profit thee. And there is a gift whose recompense is double. Like I said in the last lesson, part one, you eat on the right hand side. Getting that gift, that recompense double, or you on the left hand side being wicked, man. This is uh Romans 16 and 17. It reads, Now I beseech ye, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. For they are such. For they, it said, for they that are such serve not our Lord, Yahweh Shammashiach, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple, man. And that's what they doing, man. They destroying the hearts of the simple, man. By talking about he ain't oppressed. John the Baptist wasn't in the truth. This is Galatians 1 and 9. 
as we said before, so, so, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel to you than that ye have received, let him be a curse, man. The apostles never said we ain't oppressed, nor the elders, man. Never said that we ain't oppressed, man. Where the hell is God coming from with this madness? As we say before, so say I now again. If any man preach any other gospel unto you, than that ye have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or power, or do I seek to please men? That's what he doing, man. He 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 seeking to please your honor, man. For if I yet please men, I should not be a servant of a Mashiach. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelations of Yahweh Shah Mashiach. You see, this guy's coming with craft, man. Matter of fact, let's read Galatians 1 and 6. I marvel that ye so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of a Mashiach unto another gospel, which is not another. But there'll be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of a Mashiach. But though we or any angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that ye which have preached unto you, than that which we have preached, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed, man. This guy's going off, man. Way off. All of Israel is, is, is oppressed, man. This is Matthew chapter 12 at 36. And it reads, But I say unto you, that every hour word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words, Thou shalt be justified, and by thy words, thou shalt be condemned. So you run around here spreading this madness, man, and you got Jake believing this madness. You're gonna be destroyed for that, man. This is um Isaiah 33 and 15. It reads, He that walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly, he that despises the gains of oppressions. You can't give a man nothing, man. That shaking his hands from holding up bribes, that stopping his ears from hearing the blood, and shut up his eyes from seeing evil. He shall dwell on high. His place of defense shall be the munition of rocks. Bread shall be given him. His waters shall be sure. So a righteous man ain't going to hold back nothing, man. Okay? Giving you the straight skinny all the time, every time, man. But telling you that uh, he ain't oppressed is a lie, man. All 12 tribes are oppressed. We all on the curses, man. And like I said in, in part one, if you don't own your own Walmarts, if you don't own no warehouses, if you don't own no ports where the food come in and out at, what are you talking about? You don't own nothing. If you don't own none of these things, you on the bottom. Obviously, he's not a Hebrew Israelite. He must be a heathen to say that he ain't oppressed. So I just want to lay him back off all the apostles and elders that did lesson on this. The Lord will is edifying that I give all praise and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shah, Bahashim Rekah Kodash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, rule well, who teach well. Who are the apostles and elders of all of Israel, rather than accepted or not? And the sense of salutation to all the doctors pushing this truth and believing this truth throughout the four winds of the earth, the entire world, waking up and hopefully legs. And shalom to the Awas who are listening learning, the few sisters who are listening learning. The Lord will is edifying. So next time I say shalom. This is uh, Titus 2 and 1. It reads, But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. Period. Period, man. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. And as it says in 1 John 2 and 19, man, 
As a matter of fact, let's get that. This is 1 John 2 and 19. It reads, it say, they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us, right? Oh, let's get this. Second John 1 and 10, it say, If there come any unto you and bring not this gospel, receive him not into your house, neither be him Godspeed. For he that bid him Godspeed is partaker of his evil deeds. You see? Oh, I got to get this. Ephesians 5 and 6. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things come the wrath of power upon, upon the children of disobedience. You see, be not ye therefore partakers with them, for ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord, walk as children of light, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather Reprove them, man. You see? Bug outs, man. Devils. Shalom.